Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. Today's video is going to be four easy steps on how to have a clutter-free bathroom forever. If you guys enjoy this video, please make sure to throw a thumbs up down below and do not forget to subscribe if you are new here and let's get straight into it. The first thing to a clutter-free bathroom is to toss and get rid of expired anything, makeup, meds, face creams, conditioners, shampoos, anything that has a date that is no longer here anymore, you wanna to toss it. You want to not just toss it in the trash, you want to try your best to get rid of it properly. If it is old meds, then you want to maybe contact some pharmacies around you. They can dispose of those. I know some nursing homes actually do dispose some medication because some nursing homes do have uh, medication companies that come to the facility and then they dispose of the medications properly because if you dispose certain medications in the trash, there are certain reactions with the landfill and stuff. So all I'm saying is make sure to just do some research before throwing out certain medications. Same thing with bottles. You want to put them in the recycle and bin, things like that. But with getting rid of certain items that are expired, you're going to feel a sense of, I can do this, I got this feeling. It's kind of weird, but that is the jump start to your clutter-free bathroom or clutter-free anything. Getting rid of things that you do not have an attachment to is your jump start. That's gonna wanna make you get rid of a lot of other things as well. Step two is to start purchasing reusable items instead of purchasing disposable items. Now, to get in a little example with this, I used to buy shower curtain liners, the plastic ones, when I first moved in here because I had no idea. No one told me to buy reusable things because no one in my like inner circle is into that lifestyle, so I had to learn from trial and error. When it came to those shower plastic liners, they would only last me a good two to three months, and I can just imagine how long they last people that have kids. Probably last them less than three weeks. So when it comes to those little liners, you wanna ditch the Dollar Tree ones, you wanna ditch the fancy Target plastic liners. I don't care how much they say they're heavy duty, just forget about it. You wanna do some nice cloth ones or things that are able to go into the washer machine and that are gonna last you more than three to four years to come. I've had my two shower curtains for a good two years now and I have just washed them like every season, I don't wash them every week because that's kind of ridiculous. I wash them every season and it works fine. I do want to say that I would stick with a more neutral color than a darker color. Um, a black shower curtain liner is going to show a lot of more, uh, I want to say like water spots on it. It's going to get white looking. So stick with like maybe the tans, the greens, uh, light colors. Uh, white, if you are brave enough to get a reusable white shower curtain, by all means, I'm not brave enough, even though I do have a white comforter, but the shower, I mean, sometimes if you're dirty and things get on the shower or whatever, I just don't do the white um, shower curtains. But you do not want to just start there with just changing your shower curtains because with reusable items, not only does it help the environment, but it also saves you a ton of money. So say you switch over to the shower curtains. Now, we're gonna switch over to your loofah. You know, that little fluffy thing that you scrub your body with? Toss that, get rid of it. Um, the thing that I use now is the Eco Tools Mitt. That is machine washable friendly. I've been using that for over a year now, and I love it. I haven't bought in anything but that. It was like $4, I think, and they do have different colors. You don't like pink, they have blue, they have green. When I bought that particular uh, mitt, it didn't have colors, but now they have a wide range of colors. That is another reusable item that's gonna save you money. And you don't have to be in the shower thinking, oh my God, here comes my loofah falling apart. Cause I know you guys been through there. I've been through that where the loofah was just stretching and stretching. And then you had to like kind of tie it a little bit and then start scrubbing, maybe try to make it last. It just doesn't work out. So I got rid of those. You can also use, I know they have like um, some like, I don't know how you want to say those. It's like a sea sponge. I know those are really environmental friendly, but I rather have something that is reusable that can go in the wash plenty of times and you just keep reusing it. 
Uh, that's the best thing for my lifestyle. But if you guys prefer to have a more eco-friendly, I know those are like eco-friendly as well, the mitts, but if you wanna go above and beyond, you can do like the sea sponges as well. And I'll be linking all this stuff down below so you guys can check them out for yourself. And with switching to reusable items, you wanna think of less clutter, less waste. That's what I always think of when I'm always switching to a reusable item. I used to use the makeup pads, the uh, Neutrogena ones. I used to keep them in the bathroom, the box, the blue box. Forget that. <laughs> um, I don't really wear makeup as much, but when I do take it off, I just use my reusable makeup sponge that I have in the bathroom. Works fine, throw it in the wash, hang it up to dry, use it over and over again. So yes, switching to reusable items is going to help you have a clutter-free bathroom. Step three is to ditch the hair gadgets. I know, ladies, you're gonna kill me for this one, but hear me out. If you have a curl and iron, and you always use, say you use the 30 millimeter um, barrel. You always go for that one because you love the, the fluffiness of your curls. But you also have a little basket under your, your bathroom sink of other attachments to that curl and iron that you use once a year, maybe not even once a year. My best bet for you guys is to toss the attachments to your curl and irons, your whatever kind of hair gadgets you are using. And don't just toss them, again, if you can recycle them or if you can give them to somebody, do that instead. You don't wanna just throw things in the garbage. I gotta keep saying that because I know someone's gonna be in the comment complaining, but you wanna get rid of the ones that you do not use on the regular. I barely even use my curl and iron. Uh, in the summertime, I don't use it at all. I just, uh, for some reason, like the humidity and stuff makes my hair naturally like wavy my hair is not curly curly but it's kind of like beach waves and i find what helps me out with not using or going for my straightener and my curl and iron is i keep it kind of out of the bathroom i know it sounds weird but i hate having those wires around and for my bathroom is really really small so i kind of just put those only two hair gadgets i have i put it in a different closet towards the living room. So when I get out of the shower, I'm looking at my hair and I'm like, ooh, maybe I'll curl it. And then I'm like, wait, oh, the curl and iron's in the other room, never mind. <laughs> so it makes my hair actually healthier because I'm too lazy to go in the other room and get the curl and iron. But I did get rid of a lot of attachments and, and that's including hair dryers, you guys. Hair dryer attachments where it comes with that little nozzle on top like that, where you just attach it and you constantly do this with your hair. I don't know what that's called because I don't really do hair, but you know what I mean, the volume thing. If you don't use it, or even if you do not use a hair dryer, I personally do not use a hair dryer. I let my hair air dry. It's a lot healthier for your hair. But if you do need a hair dryer and you don't use those little attachments, get rid of them. It's gonna save you a ton of space in your bathroom. And that's also including your clips and your elastics. Some of us people um, have an elastic obsession I used to, <laughs> guilty as charged. I used to have so many elastics and for some odd reason, there was always never enough. I would have like, I would buy 200 elastics and then by like next month, I would only have five. So I was like, where did they all go? Where did the 155 of them go? And with that being said, the reason why we lose our hair clips and our elastics is because we have too many of them. We feel the need to put them anywhere or bring them anywhere, use as many as we want because we feel we have an abundancy of that certain item. So when you decrease that number of things that you have, you're most likely to pay attention to it. So if you only have three elastics, you're most likely to always know where they are and you're most likely to always use them because you kind of only have three. Um, the same way I am with my clips, I only have two clips. One stays in here and one stays in the bathroom. I keep one over there because sometimes I like to put my hair up while I'm writing, doing things like that. But if you do have clips and elastics, I suggest you guys, I suggest you guys to get a little um, basket to put them in with a cover so they're kind of like out of the way and definitely decrease the size in those. I know this was like a really long step. When it comes to ditching duplicates or items that we do not use, especially attachments, it, it goes a little bit in depth with certain things that we have and we really need to think like, do I really use that or do I not? And for step four, it's just like what I was saying, is to find better storage units. So in case you do have a lot of things in your house because you have a big family 
and you have a lot of things in the bathroom and there's things that you always use or things that people in your house use if you have kids toys things like that bath toys and you've already decluttered you've already did everything you can but it still looks a little bit of a mess you want to get better storage units it's going to help you hide the clutter it's gonna give you more of aesthetically pleasing vibe what i've been doing with my stuff um i do have these little bamboo boxes that i purchased from ikea i'll link them down below and then i also have these little woven i don't know how you want to call that they're like these little baskets that i purchased from amazon came with three of them i use one in the bathroom for my elastics and clips and then i also use one of them for like you know those little tiny pictures you get when you were a kid i have so many pictures that don't fit in my photo album so i just put it in that big basket they all come in different sizes yes it comes with three but each one of them serves a purpose in my house and it hides clutter it hides little objects that i don't know what to do with so you want to go either to the container store home goods whatever store you go to to find baskets that will fit in your bathroom that can hide the clutter and that you can label and neatly put them away and that will give you a sense of clarity while going into the bathroom also another thing that also works in the bathroom pretty well is glass jars glass jar if you guys use q-tips i personally do not use q-tips but you can use little tiny mason jars when my nephew was little i kind of kept the baby food mason jars i told my sister please save them for me she saved me a couple and then i use one for my well when i put my kasha oil on my eyelashes and my eyebrows for them to grow i do that every night and sometimes every morning i put the little spoolie into the glass jar because when you put it back in there it does leak because you're not using all the castor oil. So it does leak and it goes into the glass jar so it doesn't make a mess. You can use that for Q-tips. You can use glass jars for anything. You can actually use them for elastics or whatever you have that is small. You can use them for like little earrings, put them in there. So just to get it out of the way, out of sight, out of mind, just put it onto the side. So there you guys have it. Those are four steps to a clutter-free bathroom. I really hope these help you out. These are the steps that I followed when I was doing my bathroom. I try my best to keep it as simple as possible. And yes, I do live alone. So that's why there isn't much in my bathroom. But again, I'm gonna say a little reminder that everything that I mentioned, everything that I have, will be linked down below so you guys can check it out for yourselves if you're in the need of looking to organize your bathroom or just try to find some nice reusable items for your bathroom but with that being said i will catch you guys in the next video bye